Hey, I'm Mike, this is Jack here, bakewithjack.co.uk, bringing you your weekly bread making tip every single Thursday. And this week I'm talking about the overnight final proof. Roll it. Hello there and welcome back to the Bake With Jack YouTube channel where I share with you a little bit of my bread making expertise every single Thursday. If you've never been here before, if this is the first time you see me and you enjoy videos like this, hey, consider clicking subscribe because it probably helps me more than what you think. This week the question is, can you do the final proof of a yeasted bread in the fridge overnight while you're sleeping? And the answer is yes but it's probably not as straightforward as what you think. It's probably gonna require a little bit of work on your part to get it just right, but if you do, it is well worth it. Now we've spoken in the past about slowing down the bread making process, slowing down the dough, slowing fermentation, slowing down the puff. And we do this by refrigerating the dough, chilling it, lowering the temperature of the dough makes the yeast work slower. And this is helpful to us as home bakers for the following reasons. Number one, it helps us stretch the timings in a recipe, tailoring the bread making process to fit our lifestyle. It enables us to organize the bread around our lives instead of organizing our lives around the bread. To do the things we need to do while the dough slowly ticks over in the fridge uh, for a few hours or overnight if you need to. Secondly, it is an instant, effortless talent booster. If we let our dough rest colder, we can let it rest for longer. And thanks to the magical ingredient of time, otherwise known as doing nothing for ages, everything gets better. Our dough develops further in terms of flavor, in terms of texture, and in terms of moisture retention, making a final bread that is even more tastier than normal, has got a better texture than normal, a moister crumb than normal, and as a little added bonus, uh, has a little bit extra shelf life. Now I normally recommend as the safest option to refrigerate your dough to chill it down and slow everything down on the first resting stage. After you've mixed it, kneaded it, put it in a bowl, cling from the bowl, pop it in the fridge and leave it there until the following day or whenever. That's your safest bet, but then, which may or may not be convenient for you, the following day you have to remove it from the fridge, get it out of the bowl, pre-shape it, let it rest, final shape it, and then your final rest will probably be a little bit longer because your dough's coming up from cold now. That might work well for you, and some days that works well for me, but in actual fact, even though you are improving the texture and flavor and everything of the bread, you're not actually saving that much time in the morning. So there is another way. And so the question arises, can you do the final proof in the fridge? And of course the answer is yes, but it's a little bit more risky that way. Think about it for a second. If you do the first rest in a bowl in the fridge, then it doesn't really matter what happens overnight while you're sleeping. It might rise up, it might collapse, but it doesn't really matter because the following day you're gonna take it out, pre-shape it, reshape it, and it's all gonna puff up again, ready for the oven. So you haven't lost anything anyway. If you're refrigerating the final proof after you've shaped the dough, after it's in its final shape for the final proof, before it hits the oven, it may well rise up and collapse while you're asleep. You're not gonna know whether that's happened or not, and then you wake up and be like, ah. Oh, crumbs. Now it's not going to be a major disaster because you can always reshape it again, let it puff up again, but if the aim was to get up in the morning and take the bread out of the fridge and put it into the oven, you've just missed that opportunity. Now before we continue, let me explain something. I haven't exhausted all the possibilities. I don't have a secret formula for you to be able to replicate at home, and the reason for that is because you live all over the world in different countries and different climates and different temperatures, and it would be impossible for me to give you a surefire way to make it work. So here's the deal. I'm going to give you the tools, the knowledge, the principles that you need to make it happen at home. I'm going to share with you what I've done in the past, what I've gotten away with in the past, and the breads that based upon those principles would be the best ones to try. The rest is down to you. I'm afraid it's going to take a little bit of trial and error, but hopefully after this video you'll have much more knowledge and therefore much less error. This video is born out of a Instagram post that I did the other day about a loaf that I've named the Overnight Great White. It looks like this. This is a loaf of bread that I often have on a Friday. In fact, when I do an introduction workshop on a Thursday evening, on a Friday morning, I've always got a loaf left over. My loaf never fits inside of the oven to bake it on the day alongside everyone else's loaves, and so I stash it in the fridge straight away. On a Friday morning, I bake it, and it's just turned out to be the best 
the most delicious yeasted bread I've ever made. I, like it's the best one, I love it. And here's how it goes. I'll make a white dough around about 4.30 in the afternoon as I'm setting up my class. Then it proves up for a couple of hours until we need to use it and I'll shape up my loaf of bread. That loaf goes inside of my tin like this, which I pretty much immediately put then into the fridge. We're talking around about 6.30, 7 o'clock and it stays there until I go home. When I go home, I take that loaf out of the fridge and put it into the car and drive it home and then I put it into my fridge at home to deal with the following day. The following day, I'll put it in the oven about 190 degrees C. I do use steam, but I don't mess about with the temperature because at that point on a Friday, I can't really be bothered. Overnight, the loaf has puffed up really nicely, probably a little bit too big and it's got a real skin on the top of it and that adds to a real delicious and slightly dark crust. I take it straight out of the fridge. I put it straight into the oven because I'm a rule breaker. Yeah, that's how I roll. What? That just happens to turn out wonderful. It's delicious. It's my favorite yeasted loaf of all time, is the overnight great white on a Friday morning. Now, if you want to replicate that at home, it might be different, the timings might be different, and they might be different because your fridge might be a different temperature to mine. I never check the temperature in my fridge. I don't care what it is. Uh, and your room might be a different temperature mine. I always check mine, it's about 21 degrees. None of that matters, but the point that does matter is the fact that, remember I was talking about a pencil in video number 100, your pencil is your most powerful tool here. You need to do some trial and error to make it work. You need to write down what you did along the way so that you know for next time. And here's what I'm talking about. You might find, let's say for example, you get in from work at about 6.30, I don't know, and then you make a dough, you let it prove up for a couple of hours, you pre-shape it, shape it, put it in your tin and it hits the fridge by nine. Write that down, nine o'clock, put it in the fridge. The next morning when you wake up at seven-ish, write down what it was like. Maybe you got away with it in that point, but you're gonna need to tweak these times a little bit, but you can't tweak them if you didn't know what you did last time. That's a 10 hour rest in the fridge and you might find that that's perfect for you. At the temperature your dough was when it went into the fridge, at 10 hours time, it's perfect to hit the oven. This is all down to you having a try, and if you are having a try, here's a few guidelines as to which breads it's probably best to have a try with. First, try with something in a tin. Try with something in a tin. Don't try with a freestanding bloomer, because overnight it'll probably go all crusty and it probably will spread all over the place. If it's inside of a tin, it's gonna hold up really nicely and it can afford to get really, really big and really, really delicate, and the tin will support it. Same goes if you're doing things in a high-sided roasting tray, like for example, some rolls that are all snuggled up touching each other, or hot cross buns or something like that, if you, see, if you know what I mean. All snuggled up, touching one another, that join up as they prove, uh, they'll be supported within that tin and by each other as well. And secondly, something that I call a slow mover. What I mean about slow mover is a dough that moves slowly. It's got minimum yeast inside, for example, bagels. Bagels only got a tiny bit of yeast inside because you don't get, want them to get them big and puffy, so they are by default a slow mover anyway. That way, we've got more leeway to get stuff wrong in the fridge overnight. If it's a slow mover already, shape up your bagels, put them on a tray, you'll probably have to cover them in plastic or put them in a plastic bag so they don't dry out, and put them in the fridge, and they'll tick over nice and slowly, ready for a hot dip in the morning and a bake. Another thing I would deem to be a slow mover would be an enriched dough, something with eggs and butter and milk inside, something sweet like a cinnamon bun, for example. You might find that you can roll up your cinnamon buns, cut them with a piece of string, line them up inside that high sided tray and they'll be absolutely fine in the morning time. Think about the practical advantage of just taking a tray of cinnamon buns straight out of the fridge, straight into the oven on a Sunday morning, hot cinnamon buns for breakfast, seriously. Think about the things that you don't mind drying out on the top and the things that you do mind drying out on the top. You don't really want a bagel to dry out too much or a cinnamon bun, but a loaf in a tin, that dried out and had a real thick dry skin on top that made a wicked delicious crust. Uh, which is great. Other things you might want to wrap in plastic so they don't dry out, or you might have to oil the top of stuff uh, so it doesn't stick to the plastic as well, or put stuff in a bag and blow it up like a balloon. I've seen people do that before. If it works for you, it works for you. This is a little tactic you could use to get those cinnamon buns fresh for breakfast, or English muffins or bagels or something like that, straight out of the fridge, straight into the oven. A real nice tactic if you're gonna make it work, but you have to put in the work in order to make it work. Don't be afraid of failure, give it a shot. You might find that uh, you could cut down the yeast in a baguette, for example, make a slow moving baguette that proves up inside of a couche cloth all night in the fridge, getting dried out on the outside for a wicked crust. 
give it a go. As always, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope it's helped you out and give you another little bit of food for thought, another little way of making it work for you at home to make the wicked bread, the overnight great white. I was so chuffed with the overnight great white. It's a complete accident that came out just lovely. I absolutely love that loaf. Listen, I hope this has helped you out. I look forward to seeing you here for another weekly bread maker tip next Thursday. I'll see you then. Bye bye. And there you have it. This week I planned to get the overnight great white recipe so you have something tangible to work off on the blog, but it just never happened. I'll try my best to get it out next week. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching this week's bread making tip. Don't forget you can get Bake With Jack bits and bobs from the Bake With Jack online shop all over the world. Take a look. There's a little something extra there that's brand new. See you next week.